y'all. Well, <laughs> I got crisis. <laughs> and I think I'm gonna have a crisis. So, more on that later, yeah. Okay, hi. I didn't just finish this. I, okay, so I typically read on average like 50 pages a day. Um, I read on the bus. I'm afraid I read on the bus. <laughs> That's all I can really say. Um, and I made it to like, hold on, let me just look real quick. Real, 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 real quick. So, anyway, so. Girl, just get to the, my bookmark is what? I'm at page 47. I didn't read 50 pages, but I fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep on the bus. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, babes, I fell asleep. I'm all, I also can't look anywhere else. I'm like trying to look, I still trying to look at it. You know, it's, it's brutal out here. I fell asleep, um, which isn't the best start to crisis. I'm not gonna lie, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. And I kind of feel like I'm having a midlife crisis because I'm reading Crisis. Because she's always talking about like, well, she's always. I read the, the introduction, right? Which was the first like 20 pages. And then I read like 20 more seven pages of the actual novel itself. So I'm not that far into it, but I'm liking the direction that's taking. Um, I like, the writing, it's giving like picture of Dorian Gray kind of vibes. Just it's like, it's some dense writing. It's dense writing and the print is so fucking small, but luckily there aren't that many pages. So I will probably be able to finish it very soon. I'm also like into it. I do really enjoy it, um, like I said before. And yeah. Okay, this is day two. As you saw on the first clip, it's just, it's really awkward filming on the bus. Like it's really awkward, especially when there are people that are already on the bus. Crisis is having me go through a crisis. Like I'm in a, I'm in a book crisis currently. Okay, I'll explain that in more detail later or like a different time. But I was already going through a crisis and this book named Crisis is plunging me into a deeper crisis. Because why is she so like real for everything? Like she's just so real. It is definitely, it's autobiographical or at least like semi-autobiographical. And so in the introduction by the translator, it talks about how she's insanely like hypercritical of herself and hyper like aware of what she was like and how this process occurred. And then you can really see that in how like the other characters think about what she's going through. Like she was so, she is so aware of what she was like to other people. And it's, I find really interesting because I'm also like, when I look back on things, I'm like, oh yeah, I know how I would have reacted or how those people would have reacted to what I was like then or did then or yada, yada, yada. So pretty much I'm going through another ex existential crisis based upon this book, but I'm roughly 90 pages deep. I am averaging like 45 pages a day, which is less than what I, like five less than what I usually read, so I don't really give a shit. And it's a very short book, so I'll have it done in like two days time, roughly. Anyways, and it's really good. I'm really enjoying it. I think that I can, I'm waiting to see the parallels between like Willem and Simon and her relationship. Um, I think her name is like Malin Forst. That's the main character's name. Uh, I'm waiting to see those parallels, but I'm also like really happy because the book is more than just um, this love, this intense infatuation as they call it. It's just, it's really good. That's all I can say for right now. The writing is 
thick. It's thick writing. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Simple as that. Okay, I kind of look pretty, I'm not gonna lie, but literally what the fuck is going on? Literally what the fuck is going on in this fucking book? I swear to fucking God. I'm, I'm being, I'm, I'm just, I'm triggered. I, I, I'm triggered by this book because, okay, it's kind of partially my fault because I keep on falling asleep while reading it. Like I'm on the bus, I'll be reading and then I'll, I'll realize that like, I'll close my, oh, like I'll blink and then I'll blink, but like, the scenery has changed like twice since opening my eyes again. Like it's just, it's just, it's not a good vibe. And then I, I continue reading as I'm like falling asleep. So like I'll wake up and I'll have to reread the entire page that is right with, without blinking. Cause if I blink, I'm gonna go back to sleep. Ooh. Anyways, and I just, I can't be doing that too often so i'm gonna reread the last like five pages and then read more because i don't know I feel, I feel like reading tonight i'm actually really enjoying this although i have no clue what is going on it's definitely a more like vibes than plot kind of book i'm not necessarily loving uh the like amount of like filler it feels like i don't know there's, there are these random dialogues between, as the blurb, the blurb describes them as like the forces of nature, but like I don't really know what they're there for. I, I honestly just skim read through because I, they just don't like hold any value to me. And they're also like super boring. And the book overall is like kind of boring. It's just her having like a, a midlife crisis. Like she's literally having a midlife crisis and it's just a book. Um, but I, there are some stellar lines. Karen, boy, boy, I don't know, is a really good writer, for sure. I love her prose, and I love her, like, she goes, it's all like one consistent style, but it is so, like, diverse, if that makes any sense. It's like, it's all one stuff. Like, you can tell it's all her writing this, but, there are changes in syntax or like imagery or whatnot between like characters that is just so distinct. So like I can tell who's speaking. Well, I can't really tell who's speaking because I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, but also I can tell who's speaking from just the words that they're using, like the context kind of. Also this piece of hair is like actually pissing me off. But that's another thing that's just gonna piss me off tonight. I don't really care. <laughs> um, and I'm loving what they're talking about. I'm loving the kind of like analysis of it. Currently, um, this is spoilers, obviously. But currently where I'm at, she's talking to her principal. And her principal is like, okay, well, what are you doing after you graduate teacher's college? And she's like, oh. she's like, oh, I have a life after teacher's college, what? And she's going through all this self-reflection being like i don't feel like i'm doing that good i feel like i flopped my most recent exam i don't want to study religion yada 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 and this principal is thinking to herself wow she bombed like she aced that exam on theology and she like wrote about theology and theology this theology that but she's in a, a crisis where she feels like god is in helping her, God isn't supporting her, and she can't bring herself to um, pray even. And it's, it's kind of like a duality between what she previously wanted to do versus what she's currently thinking about, which is becoming an elementary school teacher. But then she's also like, how about I advance my studies in psychology? And she's super keen on psychology um, throughout the book. And I feel like that's a really interesting, again, like binary opposite where there's theology and there's like psychology and they're two like very different things. Okay, in the dialogues that I previously mentioned were like stupid, they do kind of like add context to this more because it's talking about like the meaning of life and like how you teach things, which are very abstract concepts. 
but like they somehow like agree upon some solution to it or something like that. I don't really know. I don't really care that much. Actually, I do care a lot so, about that. <laughs> but it is consistently um, kind of referencing psychology in regards to theology or theology in regards to psychology and like how she feels that um, psychology is going to save her and bring her out of this crisis when theology won't and when God won't. So I'm going to sit here and read a little bit more. Hello, um, biggest change. Yes, I got a haircut. I think it's fine. If you don't like it, you can take it up with my fist. And the discussion, we're not going to bother about this. We're going to bother about this. Okay, so I finished this probably about four days ago. I just haven't, um, sorry, I just haven't gotten around to recording this because I've been procrastinating. But I loved Crisis. I loved Crisis. It was amazing. It was fantastic. I am here to talk about my final thoughts and then what I think about its connection to like Young Royals and stuff like that. So firstly, this book ended very poetically. That's all I can say. You can definitely tell that she like, um, it does say that she is a poet. You can, you can definitely tell in, like, how lyrical and literary it all is. The writing is so, like, consistent that it's almost scary, if that makes any sense. And, you know, above all, it was well-written. That's kind of, like, a really weird way to just say it's well-written. And I specifically love how, um, again, how it goes back and forth between, like, a commentary on life and, like, these beautiful prose that I just couldn't get enough of, quite truly. I'm going to try. I said I was going to try and find a few quotes, but I don't. So, okay. Y'all can attack me, but I dog ear my pages y'all can fight me i don't really give a shit but i dog ear them but i don't mark out like the line where the quotation like this is chaotic like where the quotation like is on the page or not because how like it's a game to me it's like i have to reread it and think where would i have like wanted to mark this at um this page specifically is during one of those dialogues between the forces of nature that I hate so much. And it was really just the first one that I hated. The first one felt like it was taking forever. But as they got on and they start to like mix with the story and like the conflict, it got better. It did. It really and truly got better. Which is another thing that I want to talk about is, although I have said it before, it's that she's so self-reflective. She speaks about like Malin which is like her embodied so critically and like everyone has a very sound and logical opinion about Malin that she's had to like write about and consider which I think is amazing this crisis plunged me in well it was pretty much the start of my reading crisis again I had to read eight books roughly and like five weeks so update on that i have four more to read and three weeks so i'm making really good progress and i i mean i read a very short book after this one yes i'm getting my reading crisis dealt with but i kind of had like a mini identity crisis when this book got towards like the last 50 pages because she was so like focused or the, the the conversations were mainly driven around like where Malin wants to go in life. And I was like, damn, where do I want to go in life? And then I was just like, hmm. I was sitting, I was sitting here for a hot minute. 
being like, I don't know, there's nothing like like Malin. Like Malin has a very set interest. She's very interested in teaching and uh, pursuing education as like a career. And to me, I'm sitting here like, I don't want to work, work with kids like like that much, like to a, a large extent. Like summer camp, I love it, but that's because it's summer camp, right? But like kids in a school environment, uh uh uh, no, no, ma'am. Kids where they choose to go, I I am fine with. Kids where they're forced to go, I am not fine with, because they're always such such fucking bitches. Ooh. Anyways, okay. Now talking about the relationship between Crisis and Young Royals. Okay, first of all, season three was announced officially as, like, in the process of being made or going to be made today. And I want to tell you, I was kicking and screaming. I was kicking and screaming when I found out. Um, also, I have no clue what to do with my hands. So I'm going to be, like, waving this around like it's looking, I don't know. I don't know what it's like. <laughs> So I may insert the clip, I may not, I'm not really sure about that yet, but in Young Royals episode 5, I want to say, if there are 6 episodes, it's episode 5, if there are 8, it's episode 7. It's like the second last episode. Anyways, they discuss Crisis and like the, what the characters, what what the conflict is. They're, they're discussing what the conflict is because guy with the blonde hair wanted to know. And I completely see where they're coming from. I think, so Sarah starts it off by saying like, oh, she's like projecting. I, I believe it's Sarah, don't quote me on that. But Sarah's saying, oh, she's literally projecting. Like she's projecting what she would like to be on Siv. And so Siv isn't actually this person that we think she is, but she's just what Malin's interpretation of Siv is, which is quite forced, if that makes any sense. Which reminds me of another book, Nadja, Nadia. Uh, it's by a French author, like Entre something, something, in which the main character is like projecting onto this woman. Um, so it kind of reminded me of that. I haven't read Nadja yet, but I want to read it. So it's kind of interesting. Um, but this is not a parallel to Willem and Simon, I don't feel like. But it definitely has like references to it. As Simon says, I believe, or Simon says, uh, Melon has grown up with these ideals. They're very strong ideals in her. She believes in these ideals herself. But she is so distraught between doing what she feels is right and doing what she knows is right. And by that, I kind of, to expand on that, I mean, like, she feels that she is betraying everything that she's ever um, looked up to and believed. But she knows that, like, Siv is what is saving her. Therefore, it kind of parallels. I was saying it didn't, it didn't parallel, but it does parallel with how Willem has grown up in royalty, has grown up with all of these ideals and um, beliefs. But what he feels is, is this intense love. Like, he knows that he loves Simon. He knows that um, Simon will save him, like, quote-unquote, just like Siv will save Malin. But... He feels as if it's betraying everything that his family stands for, which is arguably systematic. But this is that's a whole different conversation for a whole different time period. <laughs> Anyways, um, then Willem says something or the other, and I feel as if these two uh, connect quite like symbolically, kind of. Like, Malin being this preacher, being this teacher, like, being this figure to... Like, she's preaching to these kids about God and, like, 
um, what it means to be like a good person and like respect and love and that kind of thing. But she feels like her, her infatuation with Siv completely dismantles all of those ideals, which matches up with how Willem was preaching about how like he that wasn't him in the video like they don't do that kind of like he doesn't swing that way whatever it might be and how he's the face of all of these like historical systematic ideas when his love for simon breaks all of those and i also will say that simon does kind of project onto willem no willem projects onto simon or simon enough to make it comparable like he projects this like almost need kind of it's like simon is a need not a want which again you can argue that but in my belief or in what i think it was a bit of projection like she definitely she willem definitely was projecting his like his anxieties onto Simon. And you can see that because Simon starts to feel anxious. He doubts himself with his song. And of course, like that choir teacher bitch comes up and says, hey, this is really good. But he still had those doubts. Like, hey, is this good enough? Hey, is this right? Is this what I really want to do? Um, which I think were projected onto him by Willem. Anyways, that pretty much wraps up my reading vlog and review of crisis i definitely recommend reading it even if it's not like for young royals i'm still glad that i read it regardless but yeah with life love and laughter i will bid you farewell